Brilliant article over at the Daily Beast. Trump's fine people on trial for terror. What's the matter with Kansas? The story, very straightforward. A major terrorism trial began last week in a Kansas federal court involving religious extremists who wanted to kill hundreds of people on U.S. soil using machine guns and explosives in the hopes of starting, in essence, a holy war. The FBI investigated these guys for eight months. They had, uh, they finally got busted when one of them uh, helped uh, the FBI in informant who had infiltrated their group uh, transport 300 pounds of ammonium nitrate uh, fertilizer, which is what Tim McVeigh turned into a bomb. Um, I, in fact, I think McVeigh had less than 300 pounds. And uh, they were going to fill it and put two vans in the, in the basement of this building filled with people of a different religion and blow up the building and kill hundreds of them. And why are we not hearing about this? Because the killers, the terrorists who were planning this, who are, on, as I said, on trial in Kansas right now, are white Christians. In fact, they call themselves Christian Crusaders. On the line with us is Dean Obadala, the host of the Dean Obadala Show on Sirius XM Progress Channel 127, columnist with the Daily Beast. He's on from 6 a.m. to, or excuse me, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, DeanofRadio.com, of course, is his website. You can tweet him at Dean of Comedy as well. Dean, welcome back to the program. Thanks very much for having me, Tom. I appreciate it, and especially to talk about this issue that doesn't get the press it deserves, and it should be getting more press. It should be getting national press. There's a major terrorism trial going on in federal court right now by people who were not just rambling about anti-Muslim stuff. It was they had taken steps and action, and if they weren't caught, who knows where we would be. But sadly, first of all, on one level, Trump ignores it because it's partly his base. Uh, and sadly, the media, so much of the mainstream media ignores it unless the person committing the terrorist act or plotting it are Muslim. Yeah. And it's unfair. It's, it's double standard, but it also makes us less safe as a nation. Yeah, it, this is not the this is not America. I mean, this this is amazing. And just uh, by the way, you are the author of this article that I was quoting from. Just yes. so everybody knows, Dino right. Badala wrote this. And uh, one of these guys, there's these three guys: uh, Patrick Stein, Gavin Wright, and Curtis Allen. They're all white Christians, um, and they said that they were they wanted to kill everyone, slaughter people there, including the children, in the hopes that it would wake people up. Which is, by the way, what Dan, uh, what uh, McVeigh wanted to do. He thought he was going to start a war. Uh, you know, that all our good white Christians would rise up when, when Bill Clinton overreacted to the Oklahoma City bombing. That's, that was his. But this quote that you have in this article um, this, from Stein, this was recorded by the FBI. This is verbatim. The only good Muslim is a dead Muslim. If you're Muslim, I'm going to enjoy shooting you in the head, kicking in the doors of the Somali apartments. These were Som Somali immigrants who were living in, in, uh, in, this, in this area. Kicking in the doors of the Somali apartments and killing them one by one. The three end, end of quote from Stein. The three defendants, you write, even spoke of raping the Muslim women and killing Muslim children in the, the apartment complex. And then it turns out these guys were big Trump fans. Alan, yeah. uh, one of the three, had planted a Make America Great sign in his front lawn. Um, Stein, the one I just quoted, is a big Trump fan, publicly praised him uh, and, and, and quoted the debunked story of Pershing dipping bullets in pig blood when he's going after Islam, uh, Muslims. I, I mean, this, this is uh, absolutely bizarre. Dean, you are a Muslim American. Yes. What uh, I'm not sure if that's the correct way to describe it. But sure. Please correct me if, I, if I'm not saying it right. No, that's fine. But but how does how, what how does this make you feel? What and 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 how how do friends and, and family who are Muslim in this country, you know, looking at this story that is getting absolutely no coverage? And the, you and I both know that it would be the exact opposite if the three people plotting were Muslims and the and 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 the and the community that they were going to blow up, the apartment building they were going to blow up was filled with white Christians. It would be, you know, top of news everywhere in the country. How do you, how do you feel about that? How does, what, what does this mean to you as a, well, as a human being? Uh, right. I mean, to me, and I've written about this for a few years, this double standard with the media when Muslims are the target of terrorism. We've had others like Robert Doggart, who these names don't ring a bell for most people, I've written about them, Robert Dargard, Glenn and Scott Crawford, who a man who was sentenced to 25 years to life in a federal court last December for trying to build a dirty bomb to kill Muslims in upstate New York. Robert Dargard sentenced to 20 years to life, 20 years, uh, just about seven, eight months ago for plotting to kill Muslims, and he was from Tennessee. When we see no press coverage, and it seems no one cares, 
um, you really get to the point you wonder if Muslim lives matter in this country, except when they can be used by the media to get ratings, or they can be used by politicians to de- demonize us and gin up fear and get support. You know, if these were three Muslims on trial, we all know Donald Trump would be tweeting about this and saying, look, we've caught these guys and we have to build a wall and everything else he could turn, use it for political gain. That's what Donald Trump does. He would be doing that. Instead, he's completely ignoring it because they are three white Christian men who named themselves the Crusaders and just like their namesakes wanted to kill Muslims. But in this case, the Holy War was not going to take place in the Holy Land, but in Garden City, Kansas. And that's where the apartment complex was, that it was Somali Muslim immigrants there. And it's not a coincidence. Donald Trump has demonized Muslims and immigrants. And we saw a spike in anti-Muslim hate crimes, anti-Latino hate crimes. We saw a spike in uh, anti-Semitic hate crimes as well in the last year and a half. Donald Trump has emboldened people who used to hide in the shadows to come out and plot to kill people who share my faith. They're their only crime in the eyes of these terrorists that they're Muslim. And this is the world we live in right now. I mean, don't forget, Donald Trump wanted a ban, a total complete shutdown on all Muslims coming to the country. He wanted to say to them they were not welcome in this country. That's exactly the federal prosecutor, Rizzo Burkauer, in opening statement on Thursday said, the three wanted to send a message, Muslims are not welcome here, not in Garden City, not in Kansas, not in America. That's the same message Donald Trump said when I, he said, I want a total complete shutdown of Muslims coming to this country last December, December 2015. Of course, he wasn't using violence, but he was telling them it's okay to despise and hate this faith group. And what leads from that? He is radicalizing people, in my view, no different than an ISIS recruiter, to commit acts of violence. The difference is an ISIS recruiter says, here, actually go kill people. Donald Trump is not saying that. I'm not playing games. He's not saying that. But he's taking them to the doorstep of violence. And it doesn't take much to push some of these people through. And that's what we see here. Yeah. Is your sense that the the dislike or even explicit hatred of Muslims or or fear and misunderstanding? I mean, there's this whole spectrum, right, of of right. people who go from clueless to being, uh, you know, pathological, you know, uh, uh, malignant. Um, mm-hmm. That 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 spectrum in just the last two years since Donald Trump started this rhetoric and injected it into the mainstream of the Republican Party and the and then the mainstream of American political discourse. In those two years, is it that more people are moving within that spectrum to the to the bizarre, crazy, killer, um, dangerous, malignant side? Or is it that they were always there and now they're stepping up and becoming visible and speaking out and, and joining online forums and things, and, and they're less afraid to express their opinions than they used to be. It's been a growing trend. I've been writing about it for, for several years for the Daily Beast and for CNN as well. This growing trend of on the right, anti-Muslim bigotries become the same idea as being, say, uh, against higher taxes or small, you want smaller government. Or so being, being against, being against become, black people 50 years ago. Right. So you have, and a few years ago, it was building where there was, in Oklahoma, a state senator there, state representative, uh, had said that Muslims are a cancer that must be cut out of the country. And it got press. He got a standing ovation. The GOP state chair backed him up, and he never apologized. And that concerned me because I had heard anti-Muslim rhetoric before, but not to the point where it was not apologized for. And it was a building drumbeat of hate from people like Bobby Jindal saying there were no go zones when he was running for president. Right. And, you know, about two and a half years ago, Myself and a group of about 10 Muslim Americans had the honor of having a meeting with President Obama at the time and talking about concerns of our community. And I said to President Obama that we hear this rhetoric, and I gave him example after example. And I said, what we hear from the Democrats in response, I said, is silence. And I said, we're alone, President Obama, and we need Democrats to stand up for us. And Democrats have, little by little, stood up for our community more and more. But there's a downside to standing with Muslims in, many, in the view of many people out there, even on the left. So, you know, we are alone. And we had, we used to have an attorney general, Loretta Lynch, who told us Muslims at an event I was at in IMC that you're not alone. We stand with you. Well, with Jeff Sessions and this administration, we are clearly alone. The attorney general does not stand with us. He doesn't protect people of color. That's just not the reality of this world we live in. So our community feels alone. It's been building. We're seeing more and more mosques in states, neighboring state Jersey, where I grew up, where the word Trump was used to deface the mosque. And that's not the only mosque where the word Trump was used, where wow. the word Trump is becoming a modern-day swastika that is being used as a symbol of hate, not the, word of a, not the name of a politician. And 
you know, last year the ADL documented there were 36 extremist-related murders on U.S. soil. Yeah. Or actually, 34. 18 were by right-wing actors. Nine by Islamic-related terrorists. Dean. Double the amount. So this is the world we live in. They're emboldened. They're dangerous, and the U.S. government is not taking it seriously, and the media not reporting on it. It's making it more dangerous. For several years, I've been promoting the work of a, a friend of mine, uh, Ani Zonneveld, who runs an organization out of Los Angeles called uh, Muslims for Progressive Values, MPV mm -hmm. dot, uh, mpvusa.org is the website, as I recall. And uh, she's got branches all over the world, and she's doing some really, really great stuff. Are there other organizations that I should be telling people about who can help uh, you know, support the Muslim community in the United States? Sure. I mean, there are Muslim advocates, it's called. It's a great, they do free legal work, not just for Muslims, but people who are attacked. There's, give, uh, give us web, websites when you name them. Oh, I think MuslimAdvocates.org, I believe yeah. it is. I've done a lot of things with them. In fact, they're representing me in my lawsuit against the Daily Stormer and the Nazis hmm. um, with the, another law firm. There's, you know, the Council on American Islamic Relations. There are local chapters do great work fighting for people. It's not the Islamic carriages. C A R. Yeah, we have we have we have the, the people from Kerala all the time. So much by the right, it's unreal. You know, they have a history in the past where where some things were not good. Let's be blunt. Uh, they were never accused of anything, but they were unindicted co-conspirators. That years ago, the local chapter is doing fabulous work out there, fighting for civil rights. You have the Islamic uh, Society of North America, ISNA, I I S N A, mm -hmm. and countless organizations out there now that are doing work on behalf of the Muslim community, but so much of it now is interfaith work. There's not one, I'm part of MJAC called the Muslim Jewish Advisory Council, which is hmm. ISNA and the AJC, the American Jewish uh, Council, are, are co-created this organization. All of our work now is interfaith. We're too small of a community to be alone. Yeah. And we are standing with other communities. We're standing with the LGBT community, the Jewish community, uh, African-American community, immigrants, and more and more, especially the younger generation of uh, Muslim Americans. I wish we could get the evangelical community on board on this. Oh, yeah. Uh, me too. I would yeah. love that. Tom yeah. Hart. Yeah, there you go. Dean Obadala, he hosts the brilliant Dean Obadala show, 6 to 9 p.m., right here on Sirius Progress, uh, Sirius XM Progress, Radio Channel 127. Check it out. If you if you don't regularly, it's it's great. Dean, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Good talking it. with you. And his article is over at the Daily Beast. You can find that.